This video is sponsored by Renaissance Bank, the best bank in the South. Check them out at renaissancenation.com. Hey, what's up? Matt Wyatt here. Hail State fans, Bulldog fans, Mississippi State fans. Let's take a look at opponent number one, the Raging Cajuns from Louisiana. Louisiana Lafayette, University of Louisiana. They're the Raging Cajuns. All right, here we go. Game's going to kick off on Saturday, August 31st in the Louisiana Superdome. So it's kind of a home game for Louisiana, right? But a cool trip for Mississippi State fans. Go to New Orleans, hang out, go to the Superdome. And last year, these two teams played early in the year, and it was an absolute blowout. But much has changed, really for both teams, but especially Mississippi State on the defensive side of the ball. So let's look at three key areas, coaching, offense, and defense. And we'll start off with Louisiana head coach Billy Napier. The first thing you need to know about Billy Napier, he's in his second year at ULL, or Louisiana as they want to be called, and he went seven and seven last year. Won their division of the Sun Belt Conference. All right, next up, let's talk recruiting. In his first year, they had a really good signing class. They finished 76th in the country and had 22 three-star players in their class and that was the best Sunbelt Conference recruiting class in a long time. So look, fact is he did a really, really good job in year one, seven wins, win their division of the Sunbelt Conference, play in the conference title game, play in a bowl game. But there were some things that kind of held them back from really having just like a historical season. And the other thing to note, they had seven wins last year, but they played a couple of uh, SEC teams, including Alabama and Mississippi State and they lost by over 50 points in both of those games. The other thing was Appalachian State was kind of their uh, Achilles and best team in Sunbelt, but they lost to them twice, including in the Sunbelt Conference Championship game. All right, on offense, they're gonna have a new quarterback there for the Raging Cajuns this year, a lefty, but it's a, not a strange name. He's been on the team for a while. And they were pretty good at times last year. They moved the ball pretty well against bad defenses and against the better defenses. Didn't move it very well at all. Napier and his staff can really draw up some cool stuff. Here they go, motion across, going to act like they're going to pitch it to him. Reverse that quarterback out of there on a roll and bring out a bunch on the backside, dragging across, get a guy wide open. So just watch the play. You'll see the de design, little fake toss. He rolls out and come back, get a guy wide open. Again, now that you kind of know what you're looking for, so watch the motion. So you had a trailer over here on defense to begin with to kind of get guys moving that way. And because of that fake, and like you're tossing it to him, all these defenders move in the same direction going to this side, away from where you're going to roll. Now here's your receiver slipping through. You're going to see him come across here on the drag. He's already open. Great design. And you get to see this one from behind. TV gave you a look at it. Again, even at the snap, because of this motion, every next level defender is already kind of moving this way, and you're going to bring it back to the other side. So the design is good from the get-go. And that little action, a little single wing pitch and rollout action, and there's your drag coming across. All right, let's take a look at their offense. You really need to know three things. First of all, they have a new quarterback this year, and it's a guy who's been there, he's left-handed, was not the starter, but has played some. Offensive line, all back, all five starters, they're all seniors for a combined 129 career starts. They are super veteran on their offensive line. As far as scheme, it's a zone run, spread offense scheme. This is what you need to know screens a lot of them they're a screen throwing machine here's a little tunnel screen to the three receiver side on third and 12 in a game looked like they had it set up the linemen didn't do their job they were kind of there they just didn't see the defenders who were a little more urgent so again three receiver side going to bring him in behind uh, that offensive line is going to turn them loose so this is a really good design, actually. You have exactly what you want. It's two linemen accounting for two defenders. And if he catches this football and they get those blocks behind him, then he's in that tunnel and he's off and running. 
This is just watching film. They know they're going to get screen on third and long, and two defenders split two blockers and completely blow it up. See it from behind. Receiver has no chance, but a screen on third and 12. Lots of pre-snap motion in their system. So as a defense, you have to know what your responsibility is, regardless of how they move around. Here they motion a receiver back there. He becomes an underneath, try to just swing it out to him. Makes a guy miss. But even though they're back, it still is a group that gave up a ton of sacks last year. An example here, you had plenty of blockers, just didn't get them accounted for. You know, and this is one where the numbers are on the side of the offense. Um, You've got five offensive linemen. He's out in the route, so he doesn't count. So five linemen and a back. So you got six blockers for what turned out to be three, four, and five. So you've got the numbers. You just don't get it picked up. One thing they did is hat on a hat, tackling guard, and the center is trying to turn back and combo and pick up right there. Um, but what pressures the QB is the back getting blown up by a linebacker. And that was the wrong term. He didn't get blown up. Um, um, the linebacker got blown up, but he's at the feet of the quarterback and he feels it. Then you get pressure here. Center lets a guy through. Now he's running out and into the rush. They gave him a bunch of sacks last year. Way too many, in fact. Oh, and one other thing I meant to mention to you. Their leading returning receiver is a senior, Jamarcus Bradley. He's from Mississippi. He's from Ackerman. Went to Choctaw County High School. In 2018, last season, he had 10 receiving touchdowns. And that's the most single season receiving touchdowns at Louisiana in 20 years, over 20 years. And he had over 600 yards. He's a 6'1 kid that can go up and catch the ball. All right, here's Bradley singled up on the corner here, man to man coverage. Gonna run that uh, go, get to the outside, jump ball, go up and get it. And they throw it to him a lot. You can just tell you watch their film, they trust him, and they're formationing a lot of times, you know, trying to get de- defenses to give him singled up. He's their best receiver. This is a really nice route. Little stutter to begin with, and then give himself room, get his shoulder out. Now he's got position, now it's all about the throw. And a great job to stop and high point the football. Defensively, uh, for Louisiana, they were, you know, average at best, gave up a lot of points to Alabama, Mississippi State, teams that, you know, frankly, they don't have quite the, you know, recruiting profile of those two teams, certainly not of Alabama. And um, they do have some playmakers back, though. Uh, a leading pass rusher, their best linebacker, a couple of their best guys in the secondary. So they're going to be experienced. It's just, you know, how much pressure can they put on opposing quarterbacks? And against this Mississippi State team, that's going to be tough because State has a really good offensive line who's very experienced also. So there's a little bit of a preview, just a base level precursor, get you ready for looking ahead at opponent number one for Mississippi State. If you enjoyed that, let me know about it. I'm on Twitter and Instagram, at Radio Wyatt. Follow my Facebook page. and Please do that if you haven't already. We're getting close to 9,000 on that page. It'd be cool to get there. It's just facebook.com slash Radio Wyatt. And here on YouTube, if you will, subscribe if you haven't already. Really appreciate that. Click that bell so you get notifications when we post a new video. Getting close to 10,000 on the YouTube page. Be a nice little benchmark to reach over there as well. And hope you'll be a part of that. Again, thanks for watching, and thanks to Renaissance Bank for always sponsoring these videos, the best bank in the South. Head on over to Renaissance and tell them I sent you. All right, see you next time. See ya.